So welcome everybody and here we are again, day two. So we had the wonderful Richard Heaps yesterday and today we've got Annie Catford. Welcome Annie. Annie of the Growing Massive Resilience because she's done her film and it went up this morning and <laughs> she got... It? Sorry? Are you going to show it on here? It's been showing this morning. It's been showing, I'm showing on, it on Facebook. It. No, no, you don't want to take up your time showing um, a food. <laughs> no, you don't. We all want to know all about you and oh. all about this, your artwork and yeah. everything about you. So let me just show everybody. I'm just going to share the screen with your page in the Art360 magazine so everyone can see. Um, there we go. So there we are. This is Annie's page. And if you go on to the Art360 magazine and click the little watch video, you'll see the video that we were just referencing um, just wow. now, which took Annie quite a struggle. And everyone, and she got kicked out by YouTube for potentially yes. using some crop copyright music. Yes. YouTube are very fussy. They're very fussy. It might so, have been nipples on the mermaids. Could have been, could have been. You were pushing all their boundaries, weren't you? <laughs> So that's Annie's page in the directory in the magazine. And, you know, everyone knows where that is. And there's a link at the bottom of the page here that says visit the Pure website. So you can go there, go on the read page, as we said yesterday. And as you can see, you go on the read page, Art360 magazine, and then you'll find on page 75 is Annie Catford. So you can read all about Annie on that page. <laughs> um, so, Yes, my love. How long is this going to be? How long is it going to be? Well, it depends how interesting you are oh. and how many questions there are. So everyone can ask questions, as um, those who have been on the broadcast before will know. There's an ask a question box at the bottom of the screen. And if you've got any questions for Annie, then please pop them in there and we'll come to those at the end. Now, I noticed, Annie, that um, you haven't got a website on your page. Not yet. No, but what you do have, um, I noticed, is Facebook. Yes. So if people want to contact you, yes, they can contact you via your Facebook page. And there it is. And I am, that really is a picture of Annie Catford, but it does look <laughs> a bit like a lobster. <laughs> and there she is advertising her crowdcast session today. So, yeah, if you contact Annie at the moment and, and you're really interested in buying some of Annie's work then you can direct message her on Facebook and there's her page Annie Catford and I also believe that you have um I have an artist page on Facebook you have an artist page on Facebook as well and you also have Instagram I do so we can have a quick look at your Instagram page as well, because we yeah, are very clever on there. Very clever like this. And as you can see, there's Annie's Instagram page. Yes. So once last night. Aren't you concerned about the hammer, Annie? <laughs> Was that when it, things were just getting all a bit too much for you? <laughs> Trying to upload videos and get on crowdcast and it was all too much, and you just thought, there's a hammer. <laughs> get me a hammer and photograph it. So yeah, they're the they're the means with which to contact Annie if you really love her work. So we're going to have a little look around her studio now. So Annie, tell us a bit about you and a bit about where you live and your. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, <Mr. laughs> Hello. So <t> <laughs> I'm sure Bo knows all about you. So could you tell us um, a bit about yourself? and how you ended up in Folkestone and how you ended up doing the artwork that you're doing now. Okay. Well, Bo and I went to art college together in Maidstone when Maidstone had an art college way back in the 60s. And we did, we both did fine art, but we didn't talk to one another because it was very cliquey <laughs> and you only spoke to a few people. And... We was were, that what would have been called Medway School? Oh, no, it was Maidstone. No, Maidstone. 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 Yeah, it was in Faith Street in Maidstone. 
And we had the great and the good. We had David Hockney visiting us. We had all sorts of amazing tutors. And um, do you think that was really helpful? Do you think that really stimulated you? Were they very well known? No, the the visits by the very well known artists. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It was wonderful. I think we had Larry Rivers. We had we had all sorts. It was just, and we had ateliers where because I was living with my parents at home. Um, I felt very restricted there because everyone uh, and my father taught in the college. <laughs> and oh. He taught, he didn't teach fine art. He was in the printing department under the floor. But I had a cloak of invisibility around me because of him being there. He um, that your father was under the floor. He sounds like one of the burrowers or whatever they were called, <laughs> <laughs> those little people. <laughs> and um, so where everyone was having affairs with the tutors. <laughs> I, I had this cloak of invisibility, thank God, except for Roland Pichet, sculptor, who jumped across his desk and pursued me. But I fought him off. Good. Sounds <laughs> like a wise decision. <laughs> and after that, um, I did teacher training. And after that, I was a teacher. And then... In the 90s, I had another art education experience and I went to the Byam Shaw Art College for two years. The where? The Byam Shaw, it's in Archway in London. Oh, right. It's absolutely wonderful. Does it still exist? Uh, no, it's amalgamated with St. Martin's. Oh, okay. And I was hoping that all the questions that I didn't ask my tutors in the 60s I was now strong enough to ask of these tutors in the 90s, but there were very few, surprisingly, that wanted to really engage with you. They're, and the ones that did want to engage with you were the ones that were signed up and you could hardly see them because they were so popular. Mm. But the others were sort of just wanted a cup of coffee and a chat mm. on the whole. I keep looking at you and I'm supposed to be looking at that thing up there, aren't I? You can look wherever wherever makes you feel comfortable. Is the, is, the, is the main thing is to look where you feel comfortable. That's yeah. fascinating. So you actually found that the experience in the 60s where you had lots of dialogue and there was lots going on and lots of visits by artists actually turned out to be a um a better experience than you were than the one in the 90s. No, no, they were both amazing. Both were amazing. Both um we did a lot of traveling. I went to Italy with the art college in a dormobile over the Alps with someone playing a guitar in the back <laughs> in the 60s. It, well, and, you know what? This explains a lot, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> and we all had to, we were refused entry into the Vatican because we were going to just go for a tour because we all had, all our skirts were too short and <laughs> we had to find things to put around us <laughs> to go in. You did get in, though. We did get in. Good. And do you think that was that's influenced you? Well, it all did. It all the whole experience. Although I was really uncertain of myself as an artist then, um, I, I mean, what taught me most about the visual arts was being a teacher. Because teaching in a school, and I taught in lots of different schools and Holland Park Comprehensive and uh, the Working Men's College in Camden Town and lots of different places. But you sort of, uh, you had a better analysis of what art really is because part of it's inspiration, but part of it is learning rules, breaking rules. So it was all um, that I, I was able to sort of dissect it much more. But at the colleges, it was sort of more like the, what was in or what wasn't in or I don't know, it was all a bit more airy fairy and not nothing was really spoken. You just picked it up out of the ether. So you do think that going, having that break between those two educational experiences was actually valuable. Yeah, about you five years. 
five year break between two educational experiences. I have to say I did something similar myself. You know, I finished um, and then I had a 10 year break and then I went back to it. And I, I definitely think it was worth having a big break because growing as a human being means you bring so much more to your art the next the next time you approach it and yeah. the next time you're into it. Yeah. yeah. So what would be really lovely is to sh for you to show us some of the work you're actually that's you know that's an, an incredible and really fascinating story of your life um it'd be really interesting to see what the artwork is that that has inspired now so if you could show us um, well i've got cool i'm gonna actually focus the screen on you so everyone can see the artwork this is what i did when i was at maidstone art college mm -hmm. these are little polaroids of my work um they're a bit shiny are they shiny don't just don't put them too close to the screen that's it perfect that was cows in mud they were very fond of sludgy colors in maidstone this was brenchley gardens that i did from the window in the art college so these that's were early these was the first late 60s yeah late this 60s. is norfolk on one of their ateliers we, we went away for two weeks went to norfolk to robert bueller's house in norfolk explain to us what you mean by atelier we went um part of the maidstone scheme was to um in the second year you you had a tutor at the college but you also had the opportunity to go away um and work somewhere else um there was keith grant i think in london there was derek greaves in woburn there was robert bueller in norfolk and there was a painter called george chapman in wales wow. um, uh, and you could go away for two weeks and be the artist it was wonderful with, with them in their studio yeah how amazing it so was. you you went and this was when education was free <laughs> <laughs> yes. it was all free it was wonderful yeah so you had that and you also had all these visiting artists as well wouldn't that be incredible if that yes, um, it was. It really was. could have that today that would be an amazing experience for them yeah so this is the work that you created while you were on your atelier and you went to whose yeah, studio I was, I was Cezanne at the time huh? <laughs> Perhaps you can't really see it. It's a bit shiny. Yeah, yeah no, we can. Yeah, that's good. That's uh, great. Oh, another. This is um, an, a model we had called Neville, and he laid on a mattress in the studio. And one of the tutors um, tipped up the rubbish bin over him uh, and made this huge landscape over the top of him, and we painted that. So these are paintings. Oh, I remember that. So these are paintings, are they? They are. And this one, I was when I was trying to be Francis Bacon. And this is um, a woman. I took a photograph of a woman in a deck chair in Chiswick Park long before I moved to Chiswick. And um, I did a painting of her afterwards. I didn't stand there and do it. All those other ones were paintings done live. Mm -hmm. But this was um, done in the studio from sketches. It would be really lovely if you could put some of those up on your Instagram feed so that people who are watching can actually see those um, yeah. in the full detail afterwards because it is quite difficult to see them on the screen. Yes, like they're, that. A bit shiny. they're a bit shiny and they're a bit small. But if you took them, took photographs of them or scans of them and put them up on your Instagram feed, that would be super cool. We'll be able to see them in more detail. So yeah, so and now, what are you working on now? Because you've done, you've been a painter, and then you've done film, and now you're very now, much doing photo I, collage. Photo collage. But I can show you, uh, Mike. Could you do? Show us, Mike. <laughs> show us, Mike. That'd be a good idea. Yeah. No. Could you give me um, the red hammer? And and. The seeing red book and the other book underneath please thank you um the by i'm sure experience was brilliant again mm -hmm. traveled again went to new york berlin poland had 
another atelier in Poland, just painting in the studios. And um, I got obsessed with the color red. Yesterday we had Richard who was obsessed with the color yellow and now today you're obsessed with the color red. We're going to go through the color chart. I hope whoever's on tomorrow has a particular color, otherwise I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> I did, I did, um, I said, I did two years at the Bimeshaw and I made an installation. Oh, well, I made, I painted on, uh, these won't shine so much. Hold on. I, I did some sort of, uh, I painted on sheets, folded them up, made them really stiff, wrapped them up. It was a sort of bit of Joseph Boys-ish and um, very, wow. flexible, very flexible sort of paintings and things. Well, flexible work, sculptures. Mm. Yes. And um, the mallet is the only survivor from that period. <laughs> And, you, and yourself, I'm pleased to say. <laughs> uh, um, so I use I use these sheets in lots of different ways. Wrapping these were huge, absolutely huge. And I did the same with some um, Klein blue and hung the sheets on the wall like paintings. And that was another sort of bit like a altarpiece type thing. That was the sheet unfurled. So that was one year. Another, the other year, um, I, I wasn't into film then, but I did take a lot of slides. And I had, I made a projection. Um, I had a studio room, which was, um, I don't know, about as big as somebody's kitchen, really. Um, and I painted, so this is a sort of drawing of what it was like. I, I put, I made, painted planks up the side of the studio and a door into the, into this installation, which was white trees that I brought up from my parents' place in Kent. They lived near some woods and I filled my car with as long, uh, with long, long trees and painted them all white. And I'm going to show you some of these. Um, these are some of the photographs. Um, the slides went through a process, you know, mm -hmm. um, clicking on and off, and shone onto the trees. This was like a forest fire. I had lots of themes going on. And I can definitely, I was very proud of that. And what else? There's a close-up of the the trunks burning, but obviously it's only a projection onto the trunk. I was going to say, goodness gracious, <laughs> <laughs> you're burning down your studio. So but, that's, uh, that's incredible. I mean, for that time, you know, that's just incredible work. That's, um, what, do you mean 1998? <laughs> yeah. Why? What were people doing yeah, there? Really dynamic, really dynamic and uh, multimedia. You yeah. Sit, M m many dimensions to it yes and i think you, you know your work today is very multi-dimensional isn't it, it? Is. it there's is. a lot of storytelling and then there's the um the massive narrative in your work today yeah there is you can see the you can see the dialogue between the two and and how the journey has led you to where you are yes um, I'll get I'll get one of my current sketch uh, well sort of sketch notebooks which a lot of people cool. has been generated from. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Mike, your able assistant, comes here. If anyone who's watching this live on Facebook has got any questions, can we pop your questions up on Facebook and then we can <laughs> answer those as well? But yeah, because I've got the Facebook um, feed down here, so I can see any questions that are coming in from Facebook. Right, I made these collages in the book, in these sketchbooks. Goodness. Um, that's what such is, a thing. This is, this, is current, this is current work. This is last year. Right, and what, is, what, what are you responding to here? Tell us the narrative, the story behind this work. Right. 
there were some men in my life who were all pretty dictatorial, not um, Albert Einstein, <laughs> but here is Galileo. Mm -hmm. Here's someone I knew. Here is my dad. Here is my brother-in-law. And there's Saddam Hussein. They just happen all to have moustaches, but um, they were all pretty... They were number one to themselves. Mm -hmm. I only included Einstein because he's got a moustache and yeah. I like his head. <laughs> he's got amazing hair. <laughs> and um, I invented this um, meeting between Saddam Hussein and Galileo, like in this one. That's um, oh. Galileo's up in heaven and Saddam's in his bunker. And the and the the painting behind is yours. Yes. So that's a painting. It's not photography. No, no, no. It's done on the computer. Uh, so this, all of the work you're doing now is digital, really. It is, except for the ones you can't see because my phone won't carry you downstairs. Um, this is Saddam. This is Saddam Hussein's demise when he that um, big. Uh, sculpture of him was toppled and Galileo is looking up hopefully towards there's always hope do you think that there's a lot of politics in your work is that something that most there, is in, this. there is in this mm. uh, and and I, am, I am sort of aware of um, the issues you're facing all the time this was this was a quite nice double page because um, I was experimenting with tracing paper and feathers and the planets and the planets also that there was someone who did an experiment from the Eiffel Tower to see if a feather and a cannonball fell at the same time, you know, fell at the same rate, and I it, I I was able to sort of mix it up with the planets because of Galileo, and. So this was last year you were doing this. I was. So have you done any um, work like this, experimental work like this during lockdown? No, I've done, um, what have I been doing through lockdown? Well, I have also made films, of course. Yes. And the film that you're not able to see tonight, <laughs> <laughs> which was with the Zen Bicycle Band. Um, Mike and I made films that they played to. Um, the films, it was in two locations. One was in um, a gallery in Folkestone and the Brewery Tap, and the other one was in Deal, and they... They're a three, four piece band and they played live to films they had never seen before. Mm -hmm. And so we constructed these films and they played to them. It was wonderful. So, and so yes. that was one collaboration. And I was trying to put this on the film that's on YouTube, but it, that's the one that came out. It, it was too um, deteriorated. Yes. Yeah, that's a, that was a shame. So, do you like collaborating? Is that something that you like doing? Collaborating with oh, other artists? No, I mean, it it was it wasn't really a collaboration in the way that we consulted each other. Um, we made the films; they played to them. <laughs> we had no control over what they did, and they had no control over what we did. So, it was a meeting, mm -hmm. an event. You've, you've transitioned quite frequently in your life from like painting and then you're talking about film and then you've got collage and you're very experimental, aren't you? Yes, yes. Very experimental. Is there something, is there a motivation that you can see? Well, I, always, I suppose I'm always asking questions. And um, I do, I work on, I work on themes or with materials you know, for some time. When I say some time, it might be six months. <laughs> mm. I mean, not like 
I know I know a few painters who, and I don't degenerate. How do you say that word? De denigrate. Denigrate them for it, but they're they're down the they're down the furrow, down the field, and they go on and on and on and on and on, and um, I can't do that. Things have to things explode, change. It's it's, it's interesting, isn't it? I think that that is very much someone who um, works within that immediacy of photography and film. You find yeah. that tendency that they're not the ones who will. Um, and I'm a photographer, so I, you know, I speak from a position of uh, of awareness of myself here. That I like something that's quite instant, quite quick, and you know, I'm happy to keep following and you know, changing all the time. Whereas, yeah, I don't have the 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 resilience to persist with a painting for several months that well, yeah. Wouldn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that wouldn't work for me i think we all have different tendencies and isn't yeah, we that are amazing all we are all different yeah and the other the other um thing i like about um working with digital materials is that you can make things any scale mm. so for instance mike could you um give me frida <laughs> Thank goodness for Mike. <laughs> oh yeah, philosophy. Yeah. Well, could yeah. you turn the light away then? Can we see a picture? Yes, you can. Oh, amazing. Right. Yeah, this you can see that very clearly. Now, although this is a collage, mm -hmm. um, I've made several of them. Uh, because I have, this is one of the Frieda series, which is when I first met you, perhaps, Leslie, um, that did sell several times, and I had to keep remaking it. The flowers are really pressed flowers, mm -hmm. and this is a separate photograph, and this is a separate photograph. And this is an old photograph of Folkestone Harbour. Um, so it's, it's called Frieda Misses the Boat, because I had this fantasy about Frida and Diego visiting Folkestone. Yes. And I made a book. I made a book of photographs of them visiting Folkestone. This is um, up the zigzag path in Folkestone. It's all in there. your imagination, just to clarify for everyone. They didn't actually visit Folkestone. No. no sadly not. This is all in. So they could have done. They, they could have done, we don't know, do we? Went to lots of places. Yeah. That's them on the White Cliffs of Dover. And who's the photograph behind? Is that relevant, you know, is that a relevant, there's people in the photograph behind? I know, it's just a snap, but they happen to look in period. They do. <laughs> I just wondered whether it was your younger self in the no. background. No. Or someone you knew. I was a horse when I was younger. Oh, Okay. <laughs> around name <laughs> so philosophy so politics and philosophy have played a big part in bringing you annie to the place annie is now with her artwork would you say that's the case um You're a bit curious i'm curious about a lot of things and i see griselda's asked about philosophical studies i did i did do last year um at the grand hotel in folkestone they had philosophy classes and um that did influence me a lot mike could you bring the cards that have got um which ones those no the philosophy ones the ones the ones with the yes and is there another one Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, thank you. All right, I'll take them out their wrappers. Um, because, like I was saying to you just now about how I like working in different scales, like film, you can project, you know, you can see it on your television, you can see it on your phone, or you can project it. People have projected films onto the White Cliffs of Dover. So it's. Um, but it's still the same size image to begin with or and i i like that idea 
And because I can't take you to the originals of um, what I'm about to show you, I'll show you a card I've had made. So, and you sell these cards? Yes. Mm. So this was um, one of my, uh, based on one of my philosophy ideas. And um, the chalk, uh, because we live in Folkestone near the chalk cliffs, um, I often go, we often go photographing down there, down the Warren. And I was able to use these figures from the British Museum into just as contemplative pieces, really, just contemplative um, idea, just these truncated pieces and this feeling of the fossil in the rock and people, people have, people have absorbed, well, people have been absorbed into the earth forever and basically we are all part of stardust aren't we so it's um we are all um what do they say there's only like millimeters uh, apart in our energy um from each other and from the past and the future so yes. it is being curious is a really um interesting way to approach an art practice and bringing those philosophical thoughts into it creates artwork that has so much narrative and dialogue in there that people can interpret how they wish to. Yes, and in the 90s, when art courses, or it might have even been in the 80s, when art courses became university, you know, you've got MAs and BAs, you, philosophy was an important part of your structure. They, you had to just be able to justify what you're doing and um so in the course that you did everyone had everyone had a philosophical um side to it mm. so the pieces you showed at the uh, with me last year the very big canvases they were amazing that is again you've gone a bigger scale haven't you you've gone from yes. the smaller and the film you've gone into a really big scale with those canvases yes. what stimulated you to move Eight, they're quite colourful as well, which is again yeah. a step out for you. Do um, we have any of those that I'm talking about? Well, they're downstairs. The oh. um, the big, the ones that were blown up large. Yeah. Um, hmm. Is there a small uh, one of those big blow ups that are downstairs? The green. That that's cards, Mike, over there. Yes. What motivated that, Annie? Talk us through the motivation for that series. Of well, work. having them blown up. Well, have it, going that colour direction, picking those images, and you know what stimulated you to create that that body of work last year. Um. Well, they, they, I was, I'm going to move to get my own. Um, She's gone. She's left us. I'm coming back. Come back. <laughs> Could you? No, that one. Sorry. Thanks. Um, inspiration is, you know, where artists find their inspiration. I mean, this is what this is your USP. The USP of an artist is your unique take and your unique inspiration, isn't it? Right. I love, I love these, the mermaids. Right, and the mermaids. That boat again. Now, the mermaids were um, part of being in Folkestone, and I made which you won't be able to see, but you will if you look on YouTube. Um, see the mermaid, and I'm singing to it, unfortunately, because Charles Trenney <laughs> was banned. He was banned. It's actually on our Facebook page as well. We launch we okay. launch all the videos at 9 a.m. on the day of the um, artist going live okay. so that people can get a feel for what's coming. And I'm sure they got a definite feel for um, Annie Catford this morning when they listened to you singing over the uh, track. So there were marvelous. So there were mermaids. Um, there were mermaids that I started because of living by the sea, I suppose. And then I've developed them into different sizes. I mean, these are cards, mm -hmm. but they could be blown up onto any scale. And because there's this wonderful printer in Y who prints onto canvas. Mm -hmm. Really, you can go from the microscopic, again, it's like film, you can go from the microscopic to 
something massive and I just wanted to do it as an experiment. Those big ones I had printed last year when we were showing them at uh, Battle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they all start off small like this. Yeah. And, and it's, how do you feel about them once they go from that? Do you have a different um, yes. sense of them in a different scale? Yes. They, um, I, I've been able to sell some of the big ones. People seem to um, respond to them because the printing is amazing and it's completely flat and um, matte. Yeah, we and sold one. Wonderful too. quality. It's just wonderful quality. Yeah. So if people want to contact you and buy those, what is the best means of would you like them to contact you uh, to get more imagery and to potentially buy work? Well, my website's up, which shouldn't be too long. Or they can email me. Mm -hmm. or so what's, can... your, what's your email address? Anniecatford at yahoo.com. Annie Catford, A N N I E. Yes. Catford, Catford at yahoo.com. Correct. I'll put I it in. Think, I think everyone's gone home. Oh, they're all there. They're all watching you. <laughs> this, you is this is disturbing the grid. This is underwater again. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but it's again the Greeks have crept in with the mermaids, and um, the mermaid is pulling the Greek head down. She's in the water, and so what are you trying to say with that piece? history i don't know it, it could be a male female thing mm -hmm. um or it could be don't get above yourself because someone's always going to do something to you or his history only lasts as long as it's recorded and it's re often recorded very badly well, it, it's in the hands of the victor often, isn't it? It's the Absolutely. Person. I mean, people are rewriting history now because of yeah. all the things that have gone on and been uncovered. Yeah, it's it's always written by the survivor. So the survivor is often the victor and they'll have a perspective that they have, of a story of the way what they want to spin it, won't they? I um, heard that interview that Trump did yesterday in that um, where the, there was all that trouble and people were telling Trump not to go there. Mm -hmm. um, and he had an interview with a shop owner whose shop was wrecked mm -hmm. in the process. And apparently, and he, he's the one who creates the fake news. The shop owner whose shop was wrecked didn't want to be interviewed by Trump, didn't want anything to do with it. And so they got someone to stand in for him. And so it's all fake. It's just awful um that's interesting isn't it because you you love the politics you love all the politics don't you well how can you not be involved in it how can you not it just comes into you you don't seek it out really it's there it is on on the tv and in the newspapers mm. there it is uh, and and so what does the future hold for annie then what do, what is your aspirations going forward what would you like to do? Have you got a, like a, a project that you've got in mind that you're yes, trying I to have. What do you do? Excellent. Um, <laughs> I want to work very small. <laughs> um, okay. Mike, could you get Simone, please, off the wall? Yeah. Um, Simone, who might be watching. Simone um, Riley. Simone Riley. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Had these marvellous prints are done on aluminium. Yes. Um, of some of her, I've seen the images before, but they work completely differently on aluminium. Yes, they do. They're amazing, aren't they? They're like little oh. trees. And they don't need frames. They don't need glass. You're free. Um, again, this is, I'm always after freedom. Mm. Um, and frames and glass and mounts I find really irritating. But mm. her prints, I'm... Uh, my servants just bringing them up. Good. Your man. <laughs> they are sensational. So they're small, but so you can twist the metal. Oh, that's it. So to, that's perfect. If you twist it slightly, you get a much better. So we're, yeah. getting, so we're giving a little plug for Simone Riley as well. <laughs> and another. 
I love them. Yeah, so you bought those from her lockdown, her artist support pledge lockdown. Series. I did. Yes. I did. So there's some, now you're going to try that medium, are you? You're going to try that because pledge. because my work is photographic and hers is too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she collects um, she collects textures photographically mm -hmm. and yeah, collages them together, and so do I. But mm -hmm. hers are more abstract. But um, I'm going to try some of my work in metal because it's it's a wonderful, I don't know, it's a wonderful object. It feels wonderful. It feels um, sculptural. It looks sculptural, doesn't it? Which is, which is what you were saying originally, that you, you love that sculpt, sculptural quality when you were working uh, with, with the sheets. So your able assistant, Mike, is back and he appears oh, to he, come back with a piece. Something else up. He okay. brought another piece up. So let's see that. Wow, there's the red series again. Okay, you have to turn it slightly on the out angle, put it slightly on the angle, there, and then you don't get so much of the reflection. That's better. Wow. So talk us through that piece. That's amazing. Right. Is that that looks like that looks more like a painting though, is it? it? Is. Well, it's yeah. a collage, but I went to um, a, a class. There um, we are. Your able assistant, Mike. Is he behind you? That's perfect, Mike. Just stay there. And it's I love the legs. You need to take a photograph of that, and that knows to turn into one of your images because that is perfect. Oh, God. <laughs> That's incredible. Anyway, yeah, so I, went to, I, went that. To, uh, very funny. I went to this class just to refresh myself and did some drawing in charcoal and things. And then, but I then got really excited about these um, plants we have on the balcony, which we won't see now. And um, I made these collage plants. So I used Indian ink really freely on watercolor paper, cut them out. And the red lily was oil bar. So, um, I, and then I assembled them afterwards. Oh, okay, so that's an assemblage. It's it's a, yeah. a collage again. And wow. slightly from where they were cut out. Yes. You can see where they were cut from the original piece of paper and moved a bit. And so experimental. Yeah. So experimental. Brilliant. So. What's the plan? You're, you're okay. So you're going to have a go at doing some of the stuff on metal because you've been motivated and inspired by Simone Rae. Oh. Brilliant. Yes. Brilliant. Well, I can't wait to see what that what comes out of there because I know that it'll be amazing. Your work is always so interesting. <laughs> so we've got some questions from the audience. So what I'll do is I will come back up on the screen so you're not talking to yourself. Okay. Uh, there I am. Hello. And we've got some questions from the audience. So I think um, the first one is from Peter, and he's saying I think my tutor went there. Denzel Forrester. So I'm presuming that is Maidstone he's talking about. Well, I didn't. I didn't know anyone of that name. Uh, so I'm, I'm. I'm in the Stone Age. We can't help you with that, Peter, because we don't know whether that's the case or not. Um, so the next question is from Vincent. You know Vincent, and he said, "What inspired you to change direction from painting to film to photo montage?" Um. wanting more flexibility wanting paint when often when i was painting i used to get very depressed and bogged down with it because it's painting on top of what you've already done somehow i was i was always much better if it was something instant and alive like a quick watercolor or a sketch or charcoal something really physical but I, w I was trying for years to paint, but it brought me down, down, down. And I I think it was the by I'm sure. Um, when I first went there and, and I was doing those forest things, I was doing those with paint and oil bars on long planks, on long, you know, eight foot planks. So you could make this forest. <laughs> and, um, then when I made the forest, when I had the white forest of trees inside and projected onto them, then I realized I didn't really need to do the painting because I could 
project onto, I could, I could use film and I don't know, it was more flexible. Yeah, so I, I, I like, I like when you, like as a photographer or filmmaker, you take your camera out and you go hunting, you know, you go outside, you're in the world, things happen, you look for things, you either look for things deliberately or you find things, you collect them up. I've got masses and masses of photographs and then you come indoors and then you play with them and every process is wonderful and I don't get bogged down. No, so that's your tendencies again, isn't it? Mm. It's like it's understanding ourselves. The more we become aware of ourselves, the more um, effective and, and productive and we can become because we're playing in within an alignment of our own selves and our own, what what is but right it, for us. It takes you a lifetime to learn oh, to know who you yeah. are yourself, doesn't it? It takes a lifetime. I'm only just finding out that actually, like you, I prefer film. And why haven't I been doing this for years? I should have been on the TV. I love it. I love the whole interviewing people and, you know, seeing inside your studios and, you know, just listening to you explore those thoughts in your head. And that a brilliant segue into Griselda's question, which is what part to have your recent philosophical studies Oh, that's a mouthful. Philosophical studies played in your in your work in recent years. Well, the work that I showed you was directly um, with the um, wherever it's gone. The, the cards. So the cards um, with the people. Yeah, on they were they were um, big collages. Mm -hmm. They weren't. They didn't start as cards. No, clearly. <laughs> they not. Ended up as cards, as we all do. Oh, I can't find the other one. The things like the I did, I did. Um, my system's gone haywire. <laughs> You're in chaos in your studio. I know. You've got lots of people in there, and it's just me on a screen, isn't it? <laughs> I know. I thought, thank God, they're not coming to the house. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing about artist studios is, in in past years, is it means you you tidy up and. Uh, <laughs> do a decluttering <laughs> but when, when i was a child um my and if i had to have the doctor even as a child i was sort of my room was chaos and my parents used my mother used to make me get out of my bed and i'd have to go into her bed or their bed for the doctor to visit she didn't want the doctor to see my room <laughs> And Mike was much the same. Oh dear. <laughs> Yesterday he said, don't do it in your room. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mess. Now, I'll just twist the computer screen a bit so you might be able to see a bit. Oh, look, there's Mike. There's Mike, a assistant. Hello, Mike. But that's you, isn't it? This is part of you. This is who you are. And that's what we want to see. We want and to know. Those doors is the sea. Wow which you can't see. I can almost see some boxes there. We, ha we had a box moment yesterday with lots of boxes in Richard Heap's studio. Yes. You've got the, pl you've got the quintessential artist plan chest as well behind oh, you. Oh, yes, yes. Everybody, every artist has to, I, I've got my plan chest. Every artist has to have the plan chest because that's where we hide everything. <laughs> but I, I mean, it, like he was saying yesterday, um, it's quite difficult it's quite difficult working at home. I mean, you have to, mm. I think, to support a studio, to support working in a studio, you have to have particular sort of, I, I would be doing similar things, but I just wouldn't be here. Mm. Um, but you have to pay, you have to, your work has to pay for that. Mm. And that's quite hard for a lot of people. And are you motivated to make work that earns you money? Not me personally. I, it's just because my head is splitting with ideas all the time, and I have to construct and squash them down and make them presentable. Um, and I work in themes. Mm. Um, I don't really think about the selling till the end, and then there might be an opportunity. Or I, I'm not thinking about it as I'm doing it. No. It's like the last thought. Yes. It's there. What do I do with this? 
some people start their process and i think um you know that again this is all about our tendencies how we approach this thing called an art life isn't it and for you with the dynamic way you you attack uh, attack your work i would <laughs> describe it as um you're you're very dynamic and it's very uh, uh, lots of energy in it all the time I, i'm not surprised that you leave that to the end and absolutely you know no way is right and no way is wrong everyone no. you know finds their own their own way and i was just interested whether that was a motivation uh, to sell work or whether it's just as you say you have an itch you have to scratch you have to make this work yes but it's it's a great buzz when you do sell work it's yeah you know, it's wonderful and and when you see it in somebody else's house or it's yeah. absolutely wonderful we sold that piece for you last year, didn't we, of the of the Greek series? And um, I have seen it in location. It looks amazing. Mm. I get the buzz um, kind of by default when I when I happen to come across um, artwork of my artists um, that we've sold. I love it. So the next question is from Griselda. Yes. You have interests in many current issues. Tell us about your series when you travel to return plants to where they come from virtually. Oh. Oh, Ooh. well, it started off as a, those drawings mm -hmm. um, that you saw earlier, the, um, the, the cutouts, um, and nice, big, free, every part of the work was free, the, the cutting or tearing, and the ink spilling, and the oil bars, and the turps, and wonderful, and... Um, I think Mike, your able assistant, may have gone off to get something. He has. Mike, <laughs> you get those ones that are hanging on the wall? I think he's just gone off. Yeah. No, 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 not that. But the um, photo collages, please. Me with the plants on the boat. Um, it started off with, we have plants on the balcony, we have, well we did have, we've put them in the garden now, a cactus, um, lilies and what was the other one? Oh, um, a fern from Australia. So I decided as a, a traveller, uh, not a traveller, but as a mental traveller, <laughs> I decided to take the plants back where they came from. So I took the fern back to New Zealand, but I took it riding a zebra. And a I love it. And that's me on the zebra. <laughs> I can see. My shorts. And why did you choose a zebra? Um, I like the stripes. That's just yeah. a visual thing. Yeah. I took the um, lily. It's all right, I can see it, Mike. I took the lilies back to Lesotho, where they grow, and I look like the pioneer there. You do, in your in your boots. In my big jumpers and um, a lovely hat. And is there another one? No. Oh, I thought there was one. Yes, there is. There's the desert. It's on the floor. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Mike, off you go. Go and get the last one. You'll need Mark for, Mike for any future open studio. On, on your instructions about how to do this interview, you were saying have as many as few distractions as possible. <laughs> I'm afraid I have, as I'm fixed here now. Yes. I'll have to. Um... You're absolutely fine. So ha um, Sophie's asking, how do you get the collages flat? I'm just before I answer that. I'm just yeah. going. Show the last one. one, which is me as the pioneer in, um, I think it was Utah, um, taking the cactus back to Utah. They're, they're incredible. I love them, Annie. I love them. Good. They're just, it's just a little mini story. It's like a mini story come kind of filmatic story in a, in a, in a frame. But that, I mean, they grew out of those big drawings um yeah. of the plants themselves you know i had the plants there and 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 then it you know these these journeys happen with me mm. nothing stays still what was the question what was the other question What's that question again i'll ask you that question again sophie said how do you get the collages flat 
either weighing them down with weights or we have got a small press yeah. but it's uh, not very big mm. but you have to get all the furniture and the, i mean <laughs> like the artist you had yesterday his whole house has been taken over by what he does and that's what happens i mean everything that you do is sort of involved you're living you're a living artist and that's why this open studio experience is just so amazing because going into your studio is going into your home and, and pretty much every artist that i'm interviewing i end up going into their home which is just incredible and seeing how they live and breathe their artwork that is you know their whole existence is embedded into being but, but if i if i were able to take you downstairs one floor below mm. um you would see a nice living room that looks like an art gallery oh, with so other people's work on the wall oh, that's I've got lots of tracy paisley i've got max kimba i've got um now i've got simone so tracy we're interviewing during this journey as yes. well and yeah. um so people will be able to we're not interviewing simone on this um no uh, particular time but we've obviously shown and sold a lot of her work over the years but you would have you would have had um a really good tour but i'll have to yeah arrange. you need right. to you need to get an ipad or something so you can make it more mobile in future right. that's that phone's mobile it's just the signal isn't it well no the phone's okay but you can't have two devices on at once so i think that's the that was the problem oh i see i see yeah so the final question for today we're coming up to the end of this amazing interview thank you so much we're, i feel like i understand um you so much better and hopefully everybody else understands annie catford uh, so much better and what motivates and what's inspired all of this amazing work that is so eclectic but such an, an amazing narrative running through all of it so we've got one more question if anyone else has got any questions for annie either on facebook or on um on Crowdcast here on live, please pop them in the ask a question box because we're coming up to the end now. So the last question is any chance, and this is from Bruce Murray. I Hooray! is this your friend Bruce? Any chance of getting an art book pu published? What does he mean? I don't know. Bruce got what lots do you of mean? art books published. She's got lots, she's got lots of art books published. So um, maybe he thinks maybe you should go to someone like Tasha. Bruce's lighthouse. He's on, he's on the mantelpiece. Bruce has got a lighthouse. I'm going to show you a bit of Bruce's work. Ah, I go, oh, that'd be lovely. So, but these books, are you? Is Bruce talking about these books? I think so. But maybe he's saying to you, maybe you need to think bigger. Maybe you should go to some like a main publishing house and see whether they would be interested. Does that not? That's not your thing. Well, I haven't thought of it, but. I don't think people would buy it. People, people are, are closed up. I think. I, I, must, I must. Before I go, I must show you one of Bruce's amazing um, lighthouses. Lighthouses. He I'm, lives. I'm only, I, I've never seen Bruce's work, but because you said it, to, sent Mike the able assistant. That's wonderful things with papier mâché. Hey, look at this. Actual lighthouse. And with odd bits and pieces, this tin opens i i had a game we played with it a sort of um one of those it's incredible from found objects it's made from a stone and some wire and well he'll know what it is so it's beautiful it's beautiful and he does wonderful papier mache bruce murray is his name Ah, so from, uh, there's a shout out for Bruce Murray. Does Bruce Murray oh, he's have got a an Etsy shop? Oh, he's got an Etsy shop. So mm. Bruce Murray is someone you'd shout out for. And the other person you're shouting out for is Simone Riley. Yes. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Annie. That's oh, thank you. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. You did promise me comedy, though, yesterday. I was wondering if we were going to get a joke. Well, it would have been comedy if I'd been able to walk around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought maybe she's going to sing. We're going to have a bit more of La <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do urge people who haven't seen the film to watch my film, which is on YouTube, is it? And it's on YouTube, and it's on, on the Pure Facebook page, and it'll be on there. Um, and there's a link to it to your film in the magazine on the Pure website. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. Cheers, Annie, said Bruce. Yes. <laughs> Is there anybody else you wanted to shout out for before you... Uh, before you... Well, I've, I've got a long, long list, but I won't. <laughs> it's like the closing of the backwards, isn't it? It's like, okay, and I'd like to thank my mother and my father. And well, I would Mike. like to thank them. I think you should definitely thank Mike. I should thank Mike, yes. All right. <laughs> And Mike's an artist as well, isn't he? He is, and you would have seen a tremendous amount of his stuff downstairs. So Mike's surname? Sanders, S-A-N-D-E-S. And he's just making himself a website as well, so we'll all be up and running soon. Okay, so the shout-out is Bruce Murray, Simone Riley, and Mike Sanders. Hi, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> brilliantly oh thank you so much it's absolutely glorious thank you everyone for watching and i don't know who you are other than the ones who've spoken yeah uh, lots of people are watching there's lots of people watching live on um, facebook as well so that's great so this will be up on our facebook page um mm -hmm. now forever you are going to be there forever mm -hmm. and Bo has obviously been watching you as you know so uh, Bo's just commented in the sidebar. So, no, it's been absolutely brilliant, Annie. And um, and as I say, I really do feel... Oh, I know all the names. It's wonderful. There you go. There you go. So thank you so much. Okay. And, um, yeah, we'll, you, this will be up on the um, Facebook page, so you'll be able to share it with people. It's a well. relief now because I can watch for the rest of the month. You can. Responsibility. You can. Isn't it nice to go first? Yes. It's nice to go first, absolutely. Poor um, Jeremy, so Griselda's husband, Jeremy, is going last. Oh, but so he'll learn from all of us. There's a, there's a positive in, in everything, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, there's always a positive in everything. Stay curious, Annie. Stay I've curious. I've got Jeremy Bear over there. Brilliant. Not Quick, take the screen, Jeremy. You have to see it. It's too small. Oh, okay. No, you can't see it, no. It's too shout small. out for Jeremy as well. <laughs> There you are. Shout out for Jeremy as well. Tractor. Ah. So, well, we'll hear all about Jeremy on the um, last day of the month. So, thank you so much. Um, I won't be heckling, Vincent. <laughs> She'll be on all the other broadcasts heckling, but fortunately, <laughs> quietly in the corner. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, you're so welcome, and it's been brilliant. And I love to see the fact that you're red, and you've got I've got a bit of red on my chair, and you've got your red you've got your red necklace on so i'm waiting for tomorrow and uh, we've got Susanna Rao coming on um, to talk to us about um the various projects that she's launched she works in museums she does design etc and i wonder what color she'll be i wonder we've had yellow and red so i you know no pressure Suzanne. Blue. we need to, yeah she does something called blue bird design so maybe she'll be blue but I, I admire what you're doing, Leslie, because you, you're you growing out of what you've started to grow, your seeds that you've grown um, in battle, and it's extending. And with this, it's becoming universal. It's absolutely amazing. And as far as it looks, you're not losing your cool. Uh, <laughs> I haven't lost my cool yet, even when pushed. <laughs> <laughs> No, I love it. I love this medium. I think this is mm. this is such a massive opportunity for artists worldwide to get to a wider mm. audience. And it's just me facilitating you doing it because I know that I'm by me providing you with the platform, you can talk and tell everybody instead of me having to do it for you. And you're you're all growing in front of me, and I am massively proud of all of the artists who are doing this art 360 event because it has pushed a lot of boundaries and you're having to talk to the audience directly and no i take as i said at the private view i am nothing without all of you and i am merely here to facilitate yeah, you've facilitated it and it's it's working and it's wonderful well thank and, you for that. Uh, thank and you. with websites as well with mm. websites and lockdown it mm. means that you well not only do you go into people's homes by this method that you're doing but also then your website is like a gallery of your own and, exactly. and it's clear and it's not hysterical and it's not you know it's i can't wait to get it done yeah no as soon as you get your website done we'll pop the link up for everyone to see but um for now thank you so much thank you 
we'll be banging out. But we will see you all. We'll see you all live again this time tomorrow on Facebook. They're all streaming down there, and um, and on Crowdcast. And yeah, I can't wait to to talk to Suzanne tomorrow. And I've absolutely loved our conversation. It's and the variety is good, isn't it? The variety. It is. It's brilliant. Mm. Thank you. So I look forward to seeing you commenting on all the sidebars for the rest of the month. Every day, 5.30, we'll be here. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.